Hello. Today we're going to have a look at, inst at installing a HC1 slanted radial master cylinder on a motorcycle, in this case a Kawasaki Z1000. Um, the most important thing when putting a radial master cylinder on a bike is to ensure that the piston diameter is correct for the motorcycle that you're putting it on. Uh, to know which is the correct master cylinder, I need to know what master cylinder do I have on the motorcycle in the first place. So I'm going to take this Nissan master cylinder off the Z1000 and have a look at what piston diameter is stamped into the bottom of the cylinder. There will always be a piston diameter on the bottom of the cylinder. On a European model it will generally be given in millimeters and on a Japanese model like this it will generally be given as a fraction of an inch. So I would expect to find a fraction of an inch somewhere on the bottom of this master cylinder. Yeah, okay. I can see it. I don't know if you can. It's three quarters um, in underneath here and uh, three quarters of an inch with an inch being 25.4 millimeters is 19.05 millimeters. Um, in this case, this particular master cylinder, the leverage, the mechanical leverage ratio is slightly less than it is on the HC1. So for the 19, we are going to use an 18 today, which should be, um, which should be the perfect master cylinder for this particular motorcycle. If I want to have uh, a shorter lever travel and harder pressure point, I need a bigger piston diameter. If I want a softer lever that requires less force to pull, I need a smaller master cylinder. But normally those jumps will only be made in one millimeter. And if I am changing from an axial master cylinder rather than a radial master cylinder, then I will generally need to replace the brake line, which then needs to be maybe three, four, five centimeters longer. And the, the ring piece on the bottom of the brake line on an axial master cylinder is turned at 90 degrees. So if I'm changing from an axial to a radial, I'm going to require a new brake line. In this case, uh, it's no problem. This is a radial for a radial swap, so the brake line is going to be fine. Um, one other difference between a Japanese master cylinder and a European version is uh, the banjo bolt, which is used the Japanese standard for an M10 thread is M10 times 1.25. And the European standard that we would use with our HC1 is M10 by 1. But the banjo bolt is delivered with the HC1. So that's we don't have to use the one that's on the motorcycle here. Um, what is also important, it's not really an issue on this motorcycle as there's no fairing on the bike or very little fairing on the bike, is to ensure if I'm putting a, a, a radial master cylinder on that I have enough space to mount the radial master cylinder lock to lock that it doesn't make any contact with the fairing. The HC1 is an extremely compact master cylinder and as a result um, you're very unlikely to have a problem with space if you're using a HC1 but it's always one of the first things that you check before you go and put it on the motorcycle. Um, as you can see, I've removed the original master cylinder from the motorcycle, emptied it of brake fluid, and disposed of the brake fluid properly, as you're supposed to. Um, the comparison, of course, with the HC1 is that the HC1 is a lot compacter and also a lot lighter. Um, the comparison weight-wise is 599 grams compared to... 343 grams. 
Both of these have the reservoir fitted, have the banjo bolt attached, have the brake light switch attached, have the clamp attached. The only difference between them is that the HC1 comes with the standard clamp, which we're going to have to change before we put it on this motorcycle. And here I have the, the mirror mounting clamp. There's not going to be a whole pile of difference in them weight wise. So as you can see, I'm saving a considerable amount of weight and uh, I'm a lot more compact with the HC1. So we're going to put the mirror clamp on here and then we're going to put it onto the bike. Okay, so we've uh, changed the standard clamp for the mirror mount clamp. Very simple. Drive the drift through the little pin. Change the clamp. Drive the drift back. Drive the pin back in. So now we're ready to put our master cylinder onto the motorcycle. As you can see, this is a, a hinged clamp, so it's very simple. Put the master roughly into position. It doesn't have to be exactly where it's going. Roughly into position. Take the clamp securing bolt. Now, I need to have a look to see if the reservoir is roughly level, I'm also looking to see um, what angle the mirror is coming off, although there's a certain amount of adjustability on the mirror anyway. The main thing that interests me is, can I get past the throttle without making contact? In this case, I would declare that as a yes, because I'm on the rubber here when I'm in contact, but I can also come very slightly further out so that I'm definitely not making contact and so that the ball is here in the, the area of the end of the grip. The next thing that interests me is the angle of the lever, which I'm going to try and set it around the same angle as I have at the far side. These are little fine adjustments that I can make at the very end um, after everything's on, but I just want it roughly in the position that I would like to have it afterwards. Uh, in that position, I'm happy enough with it for the time being to fill and bleed the master cylinder. I just need to make sure that I'm not nipping anything. Okay, so I just clamp that into place. Now the clamp screw here does not need to be particularly tight. It's always advantageous. There is, a, there is an inbuilt breakage um, point on the lever should the motorcycle fall over but naturally it's always advantageous if the bike falls over if the master cylinder has a little bit of give in it um, the next thing that we're going to do is attach the brake line so i have my banjo bolt with the new gasket washer which i then fit through the ring piece with the second gas gasket washer on top i then bring the line to the fitting, to the connection. So I tighten the banjo bolt into position and then with the torque wrench set to 15 newton meters making sure that the the line is not pulled or tugged and now my master cylinder is ready for filling and bleeding As you can see, we've set the motorcycle up to fill and bleed the system. Um, we didn't empty the brake system. There's still brake fluid in the calipers, in the brake lanes, and all the way to the master cylinder. I've also pre-filled the reservoir to some extent 
And just to show you how good the HC1 is at self-bleeding, um, if I activate the lever, you'll see the air bubbles rising up through the fluid into the reservoir. However, it would take me a very long time to, to get all of the air out of here. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject brake fluid into the, into the caliper. Now when I do that, naturally I do not want to inject air into the caliper. So I have prepared a syringe with a hose full with brake fluid. I'm going to set the syringe onto the bleed nipple at the caliper. And while I, <clears throat> there's always a risk if I open here and inject that I'm going to inject air into the caliper and that's putting air right into the bottom of the system, which is not what I want to do. So before I open the bleed nipple, I'm going to create a small vacuum with the syringe simply by pulling the, the piston on the syringe out very slightly. And then when I open, the bleed nibble okay there's no air coming up the lane so I'm now the little bit of air that I had is now here as a bubble in the top of the syringe if I now inject fluid into the caliper very slowly then you can see the air escaping here into the reservoir at the top And when the air has made its way through the system, the level should start to rise, which it's doing now. There's still an odd bubble there, but it would appear that most of the air is out. I then stop injecting. Retighten the bleed valve remove the syringe I then clean the area around the bleed valve although there is no brake fluid present but just to be sure always better to be sure with brake fluid because brake fluid is a very good paint stripper Ensure that that area is clean. I'm not going to put the, the dust guard on yet until I'm 100% sure that this is now properly sealed. If I now activate the brake, I have a pressure point. However, I also have a second bleed valve here at the top on the brake reservoir. I'm going to drop the ramp down slightly and then I'm going to show, show you how to do the final bleed up here at the top. Uh, now we are at the final stage of the fill and bleed process. Um, every real master cylinder has a small volume of air at the very top of the master cylinder um, which will not expel into the reservoir um, and that is why every single radial master cylinder will always have a small extra bleed valve at the top. In order to expel the air from here there are different ways of doing it. You can simply open the the bleed valve, put a bit of paper on here, activate the lever. Um, the best way that I find to do it is again with a syringe and a, sh and a soft hose. Um, in this case, we have a six millimeter spanner, which we put onto the bleed nipple. So again here, I create a vacuum in the syringe.
so that the air travels up. If I then activate the lever, I get the last bit of the air that's there and when the fluid comes clear with no more air in it, I simply close the bleed nipple again. Two Newton meters, by the way, for the bleed nipple is very small. Um, and then a good trick when you go to take this off, rather than spraying yourself in the whole workshop with brake fluid, is again, create a vacuum within the syringe by pulling on it so that when you lift this off, that the fluid goes into the syringe and not all over the place. Um, have a look afterwards to see if there is any fluid left anywhere. I should now have a very hard pressure point, which I do. I can see that there is no fluid escaping from the nipple. I can see that there is no fluid escaping down below at the caliper. So my, my brake master cylinder is now filled and bled and ready for action. The final thing that I have to do is set the level in the reservoir. So I fill it to max with some fresh brake fluid. Brake fluid, of course, should always be fresh from a sealed container. And if you do have a spillage of brake fluid, it's always a good idea to use copious amounts of water on it because the brake fluid um, and attracts the water, is attracted by water and uh, it's the best thing to, to dilute the stuff. The very last job is to put the little dust cap back onto the nipple. The last job I have to do here is to connect the the brake light switch up to the wiring loom on the vehicle. Um, I think if you were able to do this job, you shouldn't have much difficulty in doing that job yourself. And then when we have that done, uh, replace the fairing parts and the bike is ready for test rate. So enjoy the HC1. So as you can see, we've completed the assembly of the, the Z1000. Um, just to show you, there is also an option of a shorter lever for the HC1, which is more for two finger operation, possibly three finger operation. Um, the standard lever is for four finger operation. Um, that's available as a, an optional extra. We also have uh, a smaller reservoir and a small reservoir which can be connected directly down below. Uh, those options you can find in our catalogue. Um, very important before we do uh, our final test ride is to ensure that the lever is in the correct position for yourself. Um, also important to check that the brake light is operational. And after that, the position of the lever in terms of where you want it yourself um, it's a good idea to set the lever maybe slightly further out for the first test ride and then to adjust it afterwards. And uh, it may also be a good idea following the first test ride just to do the bleed procedure here again, just to ensure that there's no um, little rest amount of air that has found its way up into the top of the master cylinder. And then you're ready to rock and roll. Um, enjoy the HC one.